Hi again. Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at outcome R2, and uh, I'm going to break it up into a couple of different videos. Right now, we're just going to look at 7.2. Make sure you keep your ears open for these key terms here. There's uh, another one down there. So we're going to look at absolute value functions, equations, piecewise function, and an invariant point. Okay, so let's get graphing. All right, so if you recall here, this is a table of values. We're going to be looking at the function f of x equals x. And if you remember what that line looks like, it's very simply just a uh, diagonal line that goes across like this. Okay, so if we fill in our table of values, f of x here, this is negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, now... This graph is going to look like uh, just a straight line going like this. So when you're graphing, just a couple of key things you want to remember. Use a straight line. Put arrowheads on the edges of your lines that you know it keeps going. And uh, yeah, okay, that about covers it. Make sure you have a scale there. Uh, and you can label a couple of points too if you want. Now, for g of x, this is the absolute value of x, okay? f of x was x, and this is the absolute value. So any value that you have here, it's going to be the positive. So this is going to be 3, that's 2, 1, 0. Now, these are already positive, so they just stay positive. All right, now I'm going to do g of x in a different color, in red, just so you can have a look to see what happens. Um, I'm going to plot, I'm going to start from the center, just because it's a little easier. 0, 0, and then I'm going to go 1, 1. I'm going to go 2, 2, and 3, 3, okay? Now, over here, for these points here, it's negative 1, 1. So negative 1 on the x and 1 up negative 2 on the x and up, and negative 3 on the x and 3 on the y. So if you notice, what happens is these points right here, where do they end up going? Well, they're not here anymore. They end up going up there. So this graph looks like, uh, it looks like a V. So you've got that line there, and then you've got this line here and make sure you put arrowheads on either end and I'm gonna do it on a marker just so you can see better what the solution what G of X should look like it's the absolute value of X okay so think to yourself well what happened here where did these uh, where did these other things go uh, those points down there jumped up and now they became positive so this is not a part of the graph anymore. So this here is your g of x, which is the absolute value of x. Okay, so let's look at how we are going to define it. Um, this is really important. You need to know what a piecewise function is. And all it is, is it is stating the equation of your absolute value equation in two pieces. I should say your absolute value function in two pieces. Okay. Now, you want to look at uh, the point where they, where it's a reflection. So you see right here, I can, this was our original graph. This was our original graph of uh, f of x equals x and this part disappeared, it went away, it's gonzo. So this part here, well, what's the equation of this line? That is the line, it's not really f of x, because, well, I'm kind of redefining it here, but let's just call it f of x for now. Uh, so that's this part here, okay? So that's negative x. I shouldn't really call that f of x, really. Let's just kind of restate it as g of x down here. So if we look at the original part, we've got case 1, which we're going to say is the positive part. So case 1 is our x, and the equation of this graph here is x. This is the original, 
going to call it case one. And that exists within the domain of x being greater than or equal to zero. So x is greater than or equal to zero. You need to state the domain of where the equation is x, y equals x for this part here. Now if we look at this part here, uh, this what is the equation of this line? Well, uh, we would we could think of it as if it were to continue, we would know this as the line y equals negative x, but it doesn't continue. It stops right at x equals zero here. So it only goes from this point on to this way, where x is less than zero. So this is our piecewise function down here. We've got our case one, which is the original. This is how I like to think of it as the original. And then this here is case two, which is the negative of whatever function you originally had. Okay, that's kind of the easiest way to do it. So make sure you're familiar with this definition down here, piecewise function. Okay. I have to find my next paper. Okay, so here, this question says sketch h of x, where h of x is defined as negative x squared plus 2x plus 8. We know this is a parabola. This is an upside down parabola because you have a negative x squared. Now, how do we graph parabola? Super quick review. Okay, factor it, get the x intercepts, and then get your y-intercept, figure out what your uh, axis of symmetry is, and then you can get the vertex, okay? So here we have an x-intercept at negative 2, uh, an x-intercept at positive 4. It's upside down, so I know it goes this way. My y-intercept is 8, and my axis of symmetry is going to be on x equals 1 because that's a halfway point between the two x-intercepts. And when I plug that in here, I get y equals 9. So that's my vertex, 1, 9. And this is going to go down like that. Okay, so make sure you have a nice curve here. Do not make this pointy. Okay, try to go through that point. All right, so that is a graph of h of x. Now it says sketch k of x. That's the absolute value of h of x. Now absolute value means that whenever anything appears below the x, uh, sorry, below the y axis, sorry, no, no, yeah, x axis, this ends up going there and this ends up going there so it reflects okay any negative y values are now positive so again any negative y values now become positive so every output is positive all right now let's express this as a piecewise function Okay, remember the case one, case two stuff? So case one is my original. And where is it still the original? Well, that is between my negative two and four and including. Okay, and that's your uh, interval notate, uh, your interval notation and in set notation you can write it as negative 2 x is in between negative 2 and 4 okay so you could state it either like this or like this whichever one you want uh, and then the next part is case 2 so where has it changed you could think of it that way so it has changed less than 2 so it's changed x is less than sorry, I should say negative 2, or it's also changed where x is greater than 4. Okay, so 
that's where it's changed and now what has it changed to so basically it's going to be the negative of the original so all you need to do is put a negative sign bracket and then rewrite the original function there okay and there you have it that's what you can give your answer as the uh, piecewise function okay so now if you remember what I talked about answer this one okay next question the next thing we're gonna look at is we're going to graph y equals the absolute value of 2x minus 3 okay well 2x minus 3 that is a straight line so the first thing you should do is figure out the y-intercept so the y-intercept is negative 3 and the x-intercept is going to be well that's where y equals 0 so make this a 0 solve for x and you end up getting uh, 3 over 2. Okay, so let's just kind of pinpoint those here. And 3 over 2 is going to be like, see, that's like 1.5, like right there. Okay, that's your graph. You could even do your plot your y intercept and then run your slope from there. So 1 over, and this is what your graph is going to look like. Okay, so that's y equals 2x minus 3. I want the graph of the absolute value of this. So what's going to happen to this graph? Anything that appears under the x-axis is now gone, but this part ends up reflecting up here. And so then just take, you see how you've got your y-intercept here? It's negative 3, make it positive. So now it's positive 3. Okay, and then just connect your line from the x axis right there. So from your x intercept and go up from there. And you're going to see that it's going to look like this. So you're going to end up with a v. And then you need to state the domain and the range. So now the domain doesn't change. It's still x is an element of the real because any x value goes in. But your outputs are going to change. Your y values that come out are only going to be positive. So that's why that's our range. And if we express it as a piecewise function, so we can say y is equal to, and then we have our fancy big bracket. You've got your case 1, which is the original guy. And it's original from, and this was x is 3 over 2. So x is greater than 3 over 2. And the case 2, where we make it negative, so you put a negative bracket and then write down the original inside. Um, and make sure when you're writing this here, do not make these straight lines. They're, it's no longer an absolute value function when you're writing it in a piecewise uh, method. So I just put brackets here and you've got x is less than 3 over 2 okay so there's your case 1 your case 2 so that's your case 1 here your case 2 and you have to state the domain uh, for where this is true and the domain for where this is true okay and I always say this at the end practice 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 and make sure you ask questions have fun <laughs>